But here's the problem. We've had some cold days and nights, and the wood pile I thought that I thought would last two years, one row is all gone, and <laughs> it's terrible. We're burning more than I thought. We got uh, one, two, three pallets empty on the second row, and we're not gonna make it. This is mid-December, uh, end of December, we're not gonna make it. I just can't believe it because of my injuries, we haven't been able to go cut firewood. And I really thought that would be two years. We're just burning it out so much, but we're heating two entire houses. So that makes a difference. We use both houses. Oh, it's a lot of wood. But that'll help. That was a crazy amount of firewood we split that we had on hand all the way to here. And oh boy, we're hurting though. We've got one, two, three, four, four pallets empty. Wow, look at the nest from the chipmunks down there already. They had a nice little bed. We are not looking so hot for firewood this year. We're burning a lot to heat two houses. Uh, but that, that was a nice amount of firewood right there that uh, we had laying around just in these piles. And that's not all of it, there's some more left. Um, but put a big dent in that, didn't it? Remember that huge pile? That's all gone. We just got something we have to, you're weird. We just got something we have to cut and uh, and then run on the splitter again. Some of it was too long. They'll have all of this here. All of that to process. We'll eventually get to it. Those barrels we brought home last week, well, we got some more pallets. Can you see that? And we got all our barrels out here and all our green in our barrels. So we've got uh, everything put away neatly. I'm gonna put boards up on top of here to prevent the wind from blowing it around. And they're safe, no more rodent problems. And as I said, except for uh, replacing tarps from time to time, that's a lifetime investment right there, those barrels. Keep them off the ground from rotting, keep them dry and clean, and they'll last. Eventually, apparently in the spring when I can, I'll uh, put some proper shelter around them of some kind so that they'll be, uh, we won't have to use tarps. They'll be permanently dry. But that's it for now. No, all that green, we had a lot of green in the house yet and we didn't want to risk uh, mice getting to it. So now we're safe. Out here, we set up a frame to measure a cord of wood and we're going to process this pile and see what all we have. I gotta get some gloves, I realize. It's cold in the shade. We're gonna measure out a cord of wood and then we know what we gotta pay Chris for his share of the work in hauling this in last year. And uh, each cord we're gonna measure out and then we're gonna put out back on the wood pile. So let me put the camera down and I'm gonna get some work done here. I need gloves. Oh, we're all tired. And we're all going in for cookies and coffee and hot chocolate. Everybody worked. You got cookies. This is the day after Christmas. We got Christmas cookies. That whole entire massive pile came to a quart and a half and some poplar and a couple logs that have to be split. So uh, I really thought that was a lot more. I really did. But all stacked up, we measured the stakes as a quart and a half. Well, not quite, but you know. Huh. And then we still got to get the lock splitter over and split these up next time. I don't know what that'll turn out like. I'm not even going to try to guess now then. But now we got a path cleared and we can work on it. And now that we know what we have, when we finish off that cord, that half cord, then we can take them out back and stack them for long term. I think, Melanie, you agree? I think we're going to leave them here for a while tarped. Huh? We're going to leave them here for a while in the sun. I think so. In the sun and the wind. 
uh, put a tarp over them and let them dry for a while in the sun and the wind. And the poplar as well, I think I'm just going to leave them there, tarp them, and uh, let them dry in the sun and the wind here, and then they'll be ready. We'll get this pile done and add it on to that pile and let it dry out. Hey everybody, I got a package in the mail here from Through Night. These guys are turning out new lights fast these days. Wanted to send me something to try out here. Here's a small package this time. A little bit smaller light. Let's see what we have here. We'll have to open it up. Well, this is a small one. See what we got. Through night T1S. Well, this flashlight seems to pack a lot of power in a tiny little package. This has a insane 1,200 lumens on turbo and 407 on high. It also has medium, low, firefly, and strobe, your typical through night uh, settings. Let me see if there's a protector inside. Nope, I don't see anything. This is a different one. 1100 milliamp hours from through night. They always have their own batteries and they're really high power. They're heavy. There's a lot of mass in these batteries. So they're really good. Oh, by the way, there's a water resistant gasket right there, as is typical. There's all your circuits. There's thermal sem sensing plus your memory functions and everything else so as is typical with through night you've got a uh, memory function it always turns on in the last setting you had it which i love often there's something running around here in the night and i've got to grab a light and i don't want to have to fiddle with switches so then you got a long press to cycle through low medium and high low medium high you can do that all day if you want high is pretty bright Turn it off, it's going to come back on in high. Put it down in low, save my eyes, and then we're going to have a double click. Whoa! Oh! Okay, I got to pause. I blinded myself. I was <laughs> laughing. I didn't expect that to be that bright. This this little thing, I did not expect to blind myself. I've dealt with a lot of through night flashlights, but I didn't expect to blind myself. So we got a USB charging port and a waterproof cover. We've got a charging cable, which is great. And we've got a belt clip, shirt clip, hat clip. You can use this as a headlamp by just popping that on your baseball cap, which is always convenient. Whoops. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, it's magnetic, too. <laughs> it's pretty strong. Um, this has a really nice clip on there for you. But, yeah, you can stick it to something. It's magnetic. Should close that before I play around, eh? But it's pretty strong magnet. Great for working on your car in the night. And we've got a uh, spare parts kit, which has uh, gaskets, two gaskets, and a charging port cover. And I'm betting there's definitely a lanyard, two, two replacement charging port covers. Two replacement gaskets. These guys go all out on giving you everything you need for long life of your flashlight. So I'm going to be doing a full review and field test of this light, so stay tuned for that soon. If you want to get a really compact, convenient, but yet powerful light, go check it out. I'll put the links down in the video description and the comments below. 
And through night is the only flashlight I deal with anymore. They're just so good. I won't touch anything else. I think unless something comes up, that's it for this weekly overview. Uh, hope everybody had a happy holidays and safe journeys. We had a great time. Uh, I think Melanie's channel shows some of the stuff that we did, including a snowball fight. Is that online yet, Melanie? What? The snowball fight? Not yet. Well, guys, that's it. Please do like this video. We're going to get some cookies and hot chocolate and coffee. This is Troy from a do-it-yourself world. I'm the Oscar Project. This was a family project. Uh, talk to you later.